So next we have uh, Andres Taurinch from Soranen Law Firm, who will be talking about big data ownership. Andres. Hi, hello everyone. Can you hear me well? Um, I'm a practitioner, not an academic guy, but uh, the topic I'm going to present today is uh, not only academic but also a practical one. And uh, some 10 years ago when I started my current career, I was asked by a client, uh, by a corporate client who deals with uh, data and uh, database business, uh, he, he was asking me whether he can own data. And uh, I didn't have a clear answer that, on that, that day. But actually, by coincidence, I was asked the same question yesterday by the, by the user of data, by another company. And I said, wait a minute, I'm going to have a, a presentation tomorrow, and I'll share some answers afterwards. And uh, the, the, the content of my presentation is as follows. that. Uh, I'll just a little bit briefly tell what, what I think big data is and uh, where we stay today and uh, what's the problem we are facing and what are the options, whether to regulate or not to regulate, whether to leave up to, up to the contracts of the parties and uh, a humble proposal by, by some people. So what is big data? Actually, there are different and uh, many analogies. It's being called as a new oil or, or or, or new gold, but uh, I like the, the, the idea that big data is a uh, rock, uh, raw block of marble, and uh, it's a sheer mass of data, what can actually, what cannot be used as such, because it's a big mess of data. And, uh, and uh, a very important aspect is that there is no legal definition of data. What is big data? What is data and what is big data? Uh, but it's being understood that it's a big, big collection of, of data which is collected by, by companies and by authorities and, uh, and stakeholders. And there are many stakeholders, actually. These are not only companies which collect data, but th those are also the consumers which create data. These are internet service providers. These are data analysts, these are platforms, and uh, those stakeholders use the data for taking smart decisions, what to do with, with the data and to reduce the risk in the future to, uh, to avoid uh, messy things. Why is this hype around big data? today because basically of three reasons because there is almost in every uh, business sector there is the use of uh, smart sensors you can think about uh, car industries about uh, traffic about agriculture health sectors consumer sectors facebook google everything everything is connected to uh, sensors there's also super fast processing power right now, and uh, which, is, which is enabled by super fast computers. And especially in Latvia, compared to other European countries, we have super fast internet, which enables processing data uh, and very cheaply. So uh, let's take the example of the connected cars, and, and this is a very practical example because uh, last year uh, also our law firm was involved in uh, many surveys uh, and many uh, assignments uh, asked by the uh, global car companies about uh, big data and about uh, connected car uh, systems, about regulation, and uh, the topic is very practical again. There are many stakeholders uh, connected to uh, the car industry. These are the drivers, these are the car companies, these are, these are the platforms serving those car companies, uh, these are the, and the um, telecom uh, providers. And uh, the first question is whether the service is a telecommunication service or, or, or is this uh, not a telecommunication service? 
And uh, by the way, who can monetize the data um, collected in the in the process of, of, of driving car? Is this uh, a driver or, or a car company or, or a platform? By the way, is the tire company allowed to use the data? Because, uh, of course, the tire company should also be interested in using that data and monetizing the data and, and creating more safe tires? Or, or are these uh, public institutions who need to know uh, the data uh, stemming from the behavior of drivers? And this is not only behavior of drivers, but these are many technical data, so it's, it's not addressed by the GDPR and, uh, and data protection laws. So the problem we are facing today is, 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 is connected with this uh, very uncertain question which I was asked uh, 10 years ago and yesterday, and which I am asking myself today, who, who has the rights to monetize the data? And uh, this creates uh, quite a big legal uncertainty amongst, amongst the stakeholders, and, uh, and uh, it, it has a potential to hinder investments in the sector. Um, and, and, and uncertainty how to protect the uh, data collected and uh, processed by the, by the stakeholders. And there have been um, carried out um, an interview of, of the uh, corporate councils of, of, of companies and uh, a vast majority, approximately 90% of the legal councils have addressed the, the um, data ownership is one of the most crucial aspects today um, dealing with the big data. So uh, the answer is, is very uh, straightforward that, that we have a, a big uncertainty and the need for, for uh, some answers. So, uh, and this is, uh, the answer is not clear because the academic debate has just barely begun how to uh, address the, the issue on ownership but also the, 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 the pra practitioners have no answers. They just can say that, that, that theoretically you can own some, some rights to data, uh, but, uh, but, but in practical sense, there is no kind of um, a certain protection um, tools. So, and uh, of course, uh, when there is no um, answers, you are trying to find out what the, the current laws uh, are you can uh, rely on and uh, there are certain uh, uh, existing regulation on, 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 on certain aspects of data and uh, you can think of, of, of data protection but as such uh, data protection is not a complete answer because uh, big data is also as I said uh, non-personal data, technical data. And, uh, and as such, GDPR does not address the question on ownership. It just uh, says that the data subject can control data, not, not own data. Of course, some, uh, answer, some answers uh, can, be, can be found in, in database directive and the, the local laws of the member states uh, implementing the directive but it also does not address the, the issue on ownership. It just protects the database as the investment uh, or the originality of the database, but not the content uh, of, of the database. And of course, it's not fit for, for the purpose of, of big data uh, analytics because uh, a sheer mass of data is not a database. It's, uh, it's a, it's a big rock of data, and it's not a database. Uh, one can also uh, try to find answers in the IP protection, uh, but again, copyright, it's a creation of uh, intellectual creation of, of, of uh, human beings. The data, it's uh, not intellectually created thing. It's not a work in the sense of IP rights. So again, the copyright regulation uh, and, and the local laws you know, sufficiently uh, provide answers to uh, this question. And also the, the, the um, 
trade secret regulations. So once the trade secret is out, you cannot it protect anymore. You have to uh, you have to keep it secret. But there is no kind of uh, point of keeping secret uh, big data uh, because you have to monetize it and and and, uh, and to share and you have rights to uh, as 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 a stakeholder you have rights in, in, in big data like like I said this uh, example with uh, tire producers you have rights some legitimate rights to uh, require uh, the car companies to share data in order to um, improve safety so maybe some answers can be found in national laws in uh, civil law um, theoretically the Latvian uh, civil law can um, can be interpreted in a way that uh, the data can be the object of, uh, of property ship because the law uh, reads as the object of the property may be all that has not been definitely uh, removed from the general circulation by law. Theoretically, the definition is quite broad, but again, can you can you enforce this um, civil law uh, article to um, prove your absolute rights in, in big data? I, I really doubt that it will be practical. And of course, there are many, uh, I would say, polarized opinions amongst the other uh, European countries and other uh, uh, academics who have started this debate and in, in Germany for example I was reading a, a study on, on, on big data ownership and uh, the the opinions are, are quite polarized whether uh, data can be owned under the current uh, law and of course uh, the answer can be found in uh, contractual uh, arrangements and, and this is how actually the stakeholders solve the problem uh, today, but uh, as you know, the contractual arrangements have their limits too, and you cannot uh, derive ergo omnes right from the contractual arrangements. How can you enforce your right uh, entitled under the agreement towards third persons? You cannot claim your rights. Nobody cares about your rights. So, so there are certain limits under the the contracts as well. And the, the interesting thing is that actually the European Commission has uh, already back in 2015 and 2017 uh, um, declared that actually the civil code for digital data is, is, a, is a necessary tool to uh, improve the situation regarding big data and uh, also that uh, a fifth freedom next to freedom of movement of goods, services, capital and workforce must be introduced, free flow of data. And of course uh, there are some practical calls for, for, for uh, introduction of uh, regulation by practitioners and there is an interesting quote by, by uh, one uh, attorney from France and his even said that the uh, the next big challenge after GDPR is regulation of big data uh, ownership. Very fascinating uh, topics indeed. So, and uh, as I as I as I told, European Union have invested some money uh, in in uh, gathering information from the market, and and uh, some uh, studies have been carried out, and uh, there is interesting proposal by by Bird and Bird, they have uh, proposed that uh, a sort of non-exclusive uh, ownership right should be uh, introduced and that be and that that should be flexible ownership right in data sets and uh, a very important aspect is that traceability obligation should be uh, introduced in order to track uh, the data and, and to prove this uh, ownership right 
and uh, non-exclusivity of, of this ownership is, is necessary in order to kind of uh, promote uh, data-driven economy and uh, not to hinder the, the competition because uh, this data sharing is very important to, uh, uh, to promote and, and to uh, increase economic activities. Thank you. So, uh, and of course, uh, they, 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 have, uh, uh, they have found the inspiration from the copyright uh, three-step principle that uh, that this ownership right should be introduced in certain specific uh, situations and uh, should not uh, prejudice the the rights of the of the uh, right holder and uh, does not conflict with the normal exploitation of 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 the of the data. So interesting proposals indeed, and let's see how the European Commission will whether they will follow or, or not follow the advice, but uh, there are certain proposals and uh, what is very important that the European commissioners in uh, the digital market commissioners, they have, uh, and they have supported to uh, introducing some uh, uh, non-exclusive uh, ownership uh, right, although it's, it sounds uh, Contradictory because ownership is is exclusive thing, but uh, this might be some uh, sui generis uh, ownership, uh, right? So and uh, in the end, I just uh, want to share some uh, interesting quote that without uh, data, you are just another person with uh, your own opinion. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Andres. Uh, do we have any questions for Andres on data ownership? Good. <laughs> no answers. No, no, there's, a question. Yeah. there's a question. Yeah. A question. Um, recently has been adopted by the European Union the uh, regulation of uh, non-personal information. And this uh, regulation on personal information is mainly based on the idea of sharing information. And this also points out the fact that probably this idea of ownership that is very difficult to be accepted with regard to personal information because uh, in the European approach is based on fundamental rights uh, and is based uh, on something that is cannot be transformed as an object of ownership uh, in the traditional idea of ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe also with regards to some information in the car manufacturer and so on, uh, the second, uh, the, the other side of non-personal information, and uh, also in this regulation, I think that there is more room for what you suggest. Uh, so the idea to have a sort of sharing of this information, a more flexible forms of uh, uh, ownership. So I, 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 won I wonder if you can relate this, uh, this topic to this uh, uh, approach adopted recently by the European legislature. Thanks. Yeah, I, I was I was uh, skim reading the regulation on, 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 on non-personal data, uh, free flow of non-personal data yesterday, but uh, it does not address the, the issue as you rightly pointed out on, on the ownership. Uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know what, what's gonna be the result. I'm looking forward to the commission's answers, but uh, definitely I think that there should, because because uh, what 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 the stakeholders uh, state in their in the interviews that uh, the problem is that that you have no you have no kind of uh, tools to protect the investment in so sharing is one aspect and the regulation is mainly kind of uh, uh, addressed to 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 share the rights but there is the other right how to protect the investment, how to, um, how to prove that you are the owner of this uh, or, or you, you have rights you know, to, to get proceeds from, from this uh, ownership. So I think uh, that there should be some more answers. Hmm. Any more questions? Thanks for the presentation. I'm not a lawyer, so my question would be uh, more from a technical side. So if, if the company anonymizes the data, or more, moreover, works on the data and uh, has the results of computation of data, 
will this data be like, will I, will I be the owner of this data or not in this case? And uh, how the, you know, the legislation should work in this case in your opinion? Uh, as, as a private individual, your, your Yeah, question. yeah, sure. Like for example, I'm going to the hospital and uh, yeah. uh, they take in the lab uh, that, That's a good question. As a, as an individual too, I would, I would say that uh, it's, it's, a, it's necessary to also address the issue of, of the uh, individuals in, in, in the chain of uh, transferring data. For example, if you have uh, smart devices at home uh, which, uh, you know, collects data about heating kind of temperature at your home, there should be also some kind of benefit given to you, uh, you know, because of the exchange of information. Uh, uh, and it's just a matter of justice because the company collecting the data, they will make profits afterwards. So there, there should be some address the issue of, of how to compensate also consumers of sharing their data. Um, like, like today we can see that Facebook kind of uh, provides uh, services for free, but actually it's not for free because you are sharing your data. But it might sound quite controversial because like if I'm giving my data and it's being an anonymized, it's quite hard for me afterwards to prove that it is my data, but the value is still there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a technical question, thank you, but I have not, I'm not a technical person, so th there should be find some okay. technical solutions to that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Andres. Thank you. And we'll move on to the next.